What's good? It's your boy Fanon. All right. Roberto Durant is trying to convince Floyd Mayweather Jr., talking a good amount of smack, trying to get Floyd Mayweather Jr. to fight Canelo Alvarez in a rematch. Well, ain't going to happen. <laughs> but he's, he's right in what he says, man. I think he made a good observation. I made the same observation about Jermel Charlo. Uh, but this fight, Canelo Alvarez is not going to happen. Jermel Charlo is not going to happen because Floyd Mayweather Jr. is not stupid. You can say what you want to say about Floyd Mayweather Jr., but uh, – Floyd is stupid is not one of the things that you can that you can let out your mouth and be able to support <laughs> because he's not. He's a very bright guy. And although I've you know, I've definitely not liked some of the things that he said since he's retired and done since he's retired and actually during his career, too. Um, hey, man, as far as being able to pick and choose who he's going to fight and how to build his brand and how to make sure that he gets the most um, he maximizes his uh, m- money. In the second half of his career, man, there's nobody that did it better than him, period. And he's a super talented fighter, definitely first ballot Hall of Fame, and one of the greatest fighters, uh, if not the best fighter in the, of this century. Uh, I can, I might be able to give him best fighter of this century, but at this point in time, you know, Canelo Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez is too much for him. And that's because, look, man, you're talking about a four, you're talking about a 28 year old guy, and a 41 year old you're talking about a young man in his prime versus a guy that is a uh, versus a middle-aged fighter and at a certain point in time even though the fans i know there's guys that are going to say people that are going to believe that floyd mayweather jr even today would beat um canelo alvarez don't count on it age means something man i'm telling you in the in the in athleticism is in sports you know, the once you get over that 35, 36 year old range, hey man, you start getting things start really slowing down. You're training, you can't train like you wanted to train because you get sore a lot easier, right? And the motivation might not be there. To, but if you're fighting a guy that you believe that is, you know, having the same issues as you, it's a level playing field like Manny Pacquiao, then you could get a good entertaining fight. And I don't have any problem with Manny Pacquiao fighting Floyd Mayweather Jr. again. I wouldn't mind seeing it. My only beef I ever had with it was that it could have happened at the same time as Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. And I want to support Deontay Wilder, man. I think that this dude is really, he's very, very good for boxing. And I think that he has done outside of the ring. I think Deontay Wilder has done a lot for boxing this year. He single-handedly has kept up the interest in the uh, the unification of the heavyweight division in the United States. People in the United States don't really care too much about De- Anthony Joshua. And Anthony Joshua now doesn't even fight on a network here. But Deontay Wilder is pushed and pushed and pushed for a fight that didn't didn't come to fruition. And then so he now is like, look, man, I'm just going to do my own thing. And I think that's a great move for him. And hopefully he'll be able to build up. Um, he'll be able to build up the heavyweight boxing in the United States. You know, we got plenty of money over here, plenty of arenas, plenty of fighters, plenty of fans. And so, hey, man, he's he's sitting in a very, very um, luxurious orchard. And there's no reason for him to go over to a smaller orchard when he has everything he needs right where he's from. And I didn't want Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao to distract from that. That said, and. I don't have any issue with it happening in January of next year or February counter programming somebody else and causing them a headache because he's done everything he needs to do in his career to get to the point where he can do that, where he, he's still the most popular boxer in the world. And that is at 41 years old, you know, and that you know, that speaks, that speaks highly for him, but it also, you know, tells you these other guys got something else that they need to do to get, uh, to get themselves up to that level. And that probably is a, a fight with Canelo Alvarez. Because Canelo Alvarez, oh, he's not as big a star as man, as Floyd Mayweather Jr. was. He still is the guy right now. But to, for Mayweather to go back and fight Canelo, like uh, Roberto Duran, and shout out to the great Roberto Duran, man. I, he's, I think he's always clowning. But, you know, what he said... <laughs> Now, the second part of it makes sense, but let me go through it real quick. He said, I'd like to see Canelo get the rematch with Mayweather, and I bet you Canelo wins. Because remember that Mayweather does not like to be beaten down. You try to beat him down, and he runs around holding his balls. That fight, 
That's a fight that I would like to see him come back for because Mayweather is going to return for a fight with Pacquiao, and that's not a fight. He should fight with Canelo for two reasons. He beat him. And who are the ones who fill the Las Vegas hotels? The Mexican dudes do, not the gringos. The Mexicans are the ones who fill the hotels because they're not only going to see a fight, they're going to see a show, and the Mexicans are going to have fun. The American is calmer. I have studied everything. Um... I don't know about that. Uh, as of late, it has been, but I think that has a large part to do with the fact that uh, major networks like uh, HBO refuse to they refuse to promote and sell the Black American fighter. I don't remember uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and Tom, and Hitman uh, Thomas Hitman Hearns having a problem selling tickets, right? Ali and Frazier didn't have a problem selling tickets. Same, well, Foreman and those guys were out in Africa, but those guys, Mike Tyson, Holyfield did fine. Mike Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis did fine. Riddick Bowe, uh, Evander Holyfield did great. Okay, those are still the biggest, a bunch of the biggest pay-per-views ever involved them. So I'm not really... I'm not really going for that. I don't really, I don't buy into that. But at this point in time, man, I do believe that Canelo would beat him because Canelo Alvarez is physically, you know, he's still in his prime. He's at his strongest. He's at the best he's ever been. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a, he's a middle-aged man. All right. And I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's fair to ask a cat who's a, a middle-aged man to go jump up there to a guy at 160 pounds, Right to fight him up a 41 year old blown up 135 pounder to fight a you know to fight the hundred the middleweight champion unified middleweight champion just it's just not gonna happen but um i don't have a problem with where mayweather's doing with uh with pacquiao now that i know it's not competing with deontay wilder you know what i mean uh so it is what it is man but hey i also want to say something else man i got a couple I'm not going to do a video on this, but I'm going to make a just a quick statement to this, man. This is the cats in the LDBC who have uh, sent me messages. I don't watch or and other people keep coming to the chat. Let me know of, I guess, yeah, whatever, man. This is another somebody else. Right. If this might be guy number 10. Look, man, I don't care what little kid, little kids kicking and, you know, kicking down, kicking at doors. OK, people can say what they want to say. I would suggest to any cat who's in the LDBC or not affiliated with it or just anybody that might have their own video channel that has an opinion that uh, and gets a certain amount of people who they who they can talk to every day. Like I've been very fortunate that in a year and a half, there's just a little under 17,000 people have subscribed to the channel. And I can regularly talk to no matter what video we do or conversation we have, there's a certain core uh, base of people that visit the channel that I get to talk to on a regular basis. And it is a lot of fun. And if I don't get another one, I'm cool because of the number of people that are really that we enjoy each other's uh, conversations about a variety of boxing to topics I'm blessed and thank you very, very much for subscribing to the channel. I don't care what people outside of that. If I don't respect you, I don't care what you think. If you have a channel or if you're just going to other people's channels, leaving comments and somebody gets on there and starts talking crazy about you, just visualize them as a 10 year old kid kicking their mama's tire because she wouldn't buy him the tennis shoes that because she wouldn't buy him the tennis shoes that he wanted. And that just put that picture in your mind because that's essentially what it is. If somebody can't stand to hear what you have to say and gets into some name calling fit about you, that is just a kid. I don't care how old that child is. That's a child. And you don't waste your time arguing with children. You wait for children to grow up and you give children what they need. If they're your child, if they're not your child, you walk away from them and let them scream, hiss, kick, cry, boo-hoo, and whatever else they got to do. And then go on about your business. 
If you're on your way to work and some kid is crying, you go to a bus stop and some teenagers playing his music all loud, playing the dozens, um, got a beer in his hand at, you know, at 11 o'clock in the afternoon, cussing and making people laugh. You know, the clown, the class clown on his way to school, the class clown. Everybody can laugh at the class clown when they're in class or we're on the bus on the way to school in the city that I was from. The kids are actually taking the public school buses to get to school, but you get what I'm saying. When that kid is around you and you're on your way to work, what you just do is you look, look at that guy and you say, man, what a stupid little kid. That's not going to get him very far. And then you put your, you put your money in the bus, you sit down in your seat and you go to work. And if you do that, eventually one day that kid you're going to see sitting this now five years from now, he might just be drinking there, sitting there drinking beer, doing absolute not even getting on the bus to go to school. But if you sit there and debate with kids. Get mad at a kid for being a kid. You know, the best you can do is try to give them an example of how you go about your business. Don't get into you don't get into that stuff with them. So that's my advice to cast because I see people in channels getting, you know, don't let people get your your feathers ruffled. Um, the ones that are kicking and screaming, let them kick and scream. Who cares? And just move on and take care of your business. You know what I mean? Anyway, man, that's not the best analogy, but I think that you get my point. Shout out to my man, uh, Roberto Duran. I love whenever I hear Roberto Duran talk. He's always funny. Always talking some smack. Great champion. Um, I w- yeah, Canelo Alvarez, Gennady, Can- Canelo Alvarez, Floyd Mayweather Jr. probably would be a huge fight, but it ain't happening. And I have no problem with Canelo Alvarez and, excuse me, with Manny, uh, Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather uh, running that fight back, as long as it's not blocking the, the Wilder Fury fight. Because really, man, that's just a tremendous... I think that's going to be a tremendous fight, and I cannot wait to see... You know, who's going to be crowned the lineal, the lineal heavyweight champion and the WBC heavyweight champion. And with that, I'm out. Peace.